Thanks, Oscar. So it's true, I am a lawyer. I was a lawyer for 14 years. I've stepped away from the law. I'm, I'm what I call a recovering lawyer now. I've moved more into the technology space. I work at a company uh, where we're attempting to automate as much of the legal uh, profession as we possibly can. Uh, but let's start with some definitions. When I went to law school, my first law professor, Dr. Wolf, uh, said the first thing you need to do as a lawyer is grab a dictionary and then you can start to understand things. So step one, the law. The law is the operating system of society. Step two, artificial intelligence, getting computers to think like we do. In the law right now, we're already working with some, uh, some narrow AIs. We've got predictive coding, which I'm gonna be talking about uh, now. We've got some ways to triage document sets. Basically, we're trying to augment lawyers. What we don't have yet, and what I hope we will eventually come to, is some general AI or open the Westlaw doors, Hal. Lawyers are already using AI. They're engaging my company, for instance, to do uh, document review to help triage large data sets to figure out what meaning we can make from uh, a, a number of documents or do due diligence in deals, uh, make deal flow go faster. The way that we do this, well, 40 years ago, we used to crawl over boxes in a warehouse. We used to go through them, we'd find relevant documents, we'd pull them together, and then we'd produce them, we'd send them up. But then, computers happened. Lots more data, much more difficult to triage. We pulled all those boxes, rather, out of warehouses, we put them onto databases, we started to search them, we used Boolean search, we thought we were in good stead, and then email came and started to crush us. Now, we've started to use some machine learning tools to start moving things faster, where we can now have three, five, six uh, subject matter experts train rather the tools, use the machine learning algorithms to get what we need, and pop out a set. This has been accepted by the courts. Why is this important? Because if this can be accepted, so too can almost any of it. This will bring better access to justice, which we'll talk about in a little while. What we are finding is that we can, as lawyers, engage all of you here in the room, to try to take data mountains and turn them into little data molehills, not just doing document review, not just triaging large sets of data, but also piling through many different contracts, going through, uh, as mentioned, deal flow documents, or we can use them to take massive haystacks and look for tiny little needles, which is the same thing that we've been doing forever, but now, since we have the ability to uh, go through mountains of data, we have the ability to really triage down uh, things that we never had the ability to do before. So if we all think of law as code, the statutes and cases are basically functions and uh, algorithms. If we think about the ability to get those things into more formalized networks, uh, ways that we're talking about each other, and it's a massive hypertext, we'll also note that justice is expensive because lawyers have to do the interpretation of that hypertext, and it shouldn't be. The way that we're gonna increase access to justice, I believe, is by getting access to AI for consumers. This is already happening. The way that you have the ability to develop machine learning tools to help triage both the data sets that I'm talking about and to help analyze and get the uh, code together, you can use those, you can apply those, you can deploy those. One person, one uh, programmer out in, uh, a British guy out in, at Stanford came up with do not pay if you've ever had a traffic ticket. This is not something that uh, lawyers generally want to engage with. It's gonna cost us too much to fight the traffic ticket for you, but do not pay is a little chatbot that helps you do that. Contract review, anything where you have legalese, anything where you used to have a dictionary, now you can have Machine learning tools take the whole corpus of whatever came before, synthesize those things, look for patterns, and start to uh, uh, deploy them for you. And I believe that the future is what I call an AI worm, not like you would have seen in Dune, but a write once, read many tool set where we can take all of the law that's come before, since that's basically what the corpus of the law is, that's what you're paying us to go through, automate it, point the hypertexts to one another, and then start to get results. And that's where we start to see the access to justice uh, come in. Where once it cost us hundreds of dollars an hour or thousands of dollars an hour to get very well-respected lawyers to go through documents and then we uh, saw that bifurcate into rich man's law and poor man's law soon, optimally, we'll be able to say, all right, well, I'm going to do this, is this legal? These are the questions that we always get as lawyers and these are the questions that we want to start to answer based on large data sets that we've already got and applying them here. So if you'd like to talk about how to apply AI or how we can all apply AI and machine learning in the law, this is me. Uh, I can be found here afterwards or online. Thank you.